action! Like, I don't actually know what this hat is. Yeah. <laughs> so, Dan, in the last episode, we wrote our hit song. But there is still something missing. Yeah, I mean, it's the visual, right? I mean, yeah. music is about visuals too. The look, the celebrity, the story. Music celebrity isn't new. It's been around probably as long as people have been playing music. Before One Direction, Believers and Beatlemania, people went gaga over classical musicians and opera singers. There's always the production of some sort of image to attach to the musician that creates certain ideas or feelings or notions or concepts that are intended to encapsulate that artist. This is what they said about Paganini, a 19th century Italian violin virtuoso. The Italians applaud him like mad and when he leaves the theatre, 300 people follow him to his hotel. This guy was one of the world's first rock stars. And the story goes he sold his soul to the devil for violin powers. We don't know if that's actually true, but you know what was true? The story got more people to his concerts. People connect to storytelling and that's what image essentially is, the story of an artist. And by connecting to the story, you create intimacy, and intimacy creates dollars. This mask that all of these people wear that appears authentic, but at the same time we all know that's created for a purpose. Most people are quite savvy. So they realise it's an illusion, but it's a very pleasing illusion. Did you actually catch a glimpse of it? Yes! And was it worth it? Yes! <laughs> From illustrations on the cover of sheet music to record sleeves, Hollywood films starring music idols, radio personalities, TV variety shows, cassettes, CDs, MTV and music videos, idol shows, YouTube and social media, image creation has been part and parcel of the way we consume music. And here's what a few current artists think of the relationship between image and music. It's a strange thing because it shouldn't be about image, it should be about the artist. And some people choose to put on a persona on stage and that's great. For me, like, there's value in me being myself because that's the thing I know how to do and if I try and do anything else, I'm not betraying myself authentically. My apologies for the delay. I do get sick of answering questions about myself. I would rather talk about the music that I make. It's important. It's not important to music. It's important to branding. It's important to business. Image has probably always been important. It's part and parcel of people selecting to identify with the look that comes with what they're hearing. It depends on who you are as that artist. And for me, um, styling and the look and, and all that, it, it adds to the music. It just adds fun for me. I love it. So how is image created in the first place? We had a look around and found out that it takes a village. Tom Larkin is the creator of multiple artist development initiatives. Artist development involves really getting artists together with songwriters, with producers, getting the right directors, often getting the right stylists, camera and photography work to help communicate that artist's message further. The music is, is the thing that communicates without any sense of who they are and what they have on an image level. From that point, it becomes about who they are and what they want to say to the world and how they operate building a business around their music. Stylists help an artist assemble their look. Malayne Knight has worked with iconic stars like Prince, Beyonce and Lionel Richie. As a stylist, your main requirement is to dress people for public appearances, live shows, music videos, photo shoots, and to find looks for them that develop their persona and their personality, or back up telling the story of their record. Style does target particular demographics. That's based on the industry that's around you. You can try and break away from that, but you run the risk of the people that are programming not knowing where to place you and not knowing how to market you or where to put you. Claire Collins is an artist manager and the director of Bossy Music. Claire's company has managed award-winning artists including Lord and Flume. I work with record labels and independent artists and managers to work out a strategy for presenting them to the outside world. I do often work with the artists to help them build a story about how they came to the point that they're at. The story has to be, number one, believable and true. An event that kind of 
helps people understand how they came to be where they are. And I guess a good example is Flume. He started making music when he found a piece of music making equipment in a cereal box. The most important thing is authenticity and that their audience and their fans know that that's their real selves coming through. Melody Forgani takes music to radio stations and tries to get a song played on the airwaves. It's a job to tell radio stations who they are, where they're from, what their story is, and I guess like what other people's perceptions of the artists are. In terms of if we're talking like the physical image, that's really not important, but if you are working at a station and you're playing an artist and you want maybe the artist to have a long career at the station or you know long life there, a uh, story is important, so like why is it that this artist might appeal to their audiences? These people really know the industry inside and out. Oh, and that's why we had to find out what they thought of our hit song. <laughs> hit song. Yeah, go for it. Make sure it's loud. <laughs> definitely a hit song. I'm down with it. That's 100% from me. Very modern, contemporary, plenty of hooks. The vocals, exceptional. Those lyrics sound like they've been written by a radio host and an academic, not for me. It's a hit in the sense that it's like a snappy, catchy song. It sounds like it would do well on commercial radio where lyrics don't tend to matter so much, so I'm interested to hear how it goes. We also asked them what they'd like to see in our music video. If we were to make a music video. Because image is everything. Everything. Maybe dressed as bakers or with aprons on. For some reason, I'm just thinking of cheese. Well, I think they're definitely dressed in all white, aren't they? I expect to see food carnage down the side of the street. I'm seeing, like, flying croissants coming at me. You could just get croissants or make them into a headpiece. White rooms and, I think, food fights. So, Linda, I think it's pretty clear we're going to do it, Dan. We hired a warehouse and threw everything our image team came up with onto this very white wall. We are finally on our way to becoming real artists. Goldiano! All of this just comes really naturally to me. I've, I've never felt more comfortable. I'm so glad Dan has finally had the chance to dress as he's been begging to every episode. It's hard not to outshine the other people on screen, but sometimes you've just got to be humble. A lot of pastries were harmed in the making of this clip, but you'll be glad to know that I ate some off the floor. So did I. Of course, we also invited our featured vocal star, Coda Banks, to join in the croissant worship. And for the record, Sexy Croissant is single. So how does it feel being Goldiano? If you told me that this was where I'd be a year ago... With like, your PhD? Yeah, yeah, I would have fully believed you. This seems like a very normal trajectory for somebody like me. This is your look now, Dan. Yeah, yeah, what about you? I'm comfy. Mm, good. Clearly. Good. Like what you see? Well, you can see the full music video and the making of the song right here on YouTube.